So now uh, we're going to call an HTTP web service using a get method. We're going to pass in the, uh, we're going to have to change this. We're going to have to set the actual URL of the server um, that, that actually executes this get employees. But uh, first we're going to check if the response is successful. If it is, then we're going to, we're going to want to read the, the data into from the content. And so to do that, you're going to say uh, response.content.read. This reads the, the data as a string, actually. All right. And then um, I'm going to add this as a namespace. You can actually add namespaces in here like this. Some reason it's not adding it for me automatically, so I'm gonna do it manually. Text.json and we're gonna say deserialize so uh, so this actually has to be read stream async. That's what it has to be. Deserialize, it takes in a stream, which is the data. Why is it giving me an error? Employee does not contain the definition we get. Oh. So this, I think it has to be a list. Is that what it has to be? It's giving me a weird error. So asynchronous, what do you think? So I think we could also do it like this without the async method. Let's see. So reads, have you ever put your presentation by stream? Let's just see if this builds. There we go. Okay. So um, we're going to say if employees not equal null. Well, it's not going to equal null. Actually, you don't have to set this. In. You don't have to create this. So we're going to say if it's not equal to null. So at this point, you define this variable, but it's null. So so if it's not null, then we're going to render it. We're going to render the data. We're going to render the data as a table. I'm using some bootstrap classes so it looks better. And table row. So we're going to create the header classes, the table headers header columns rather, and we're going to call this temp employee ID, first name, last name, um, we're going to say email. I'm only going to add these columns for now, just want to make sure the data actually uh, gets rendered, create a t-body, table row, table column, yeah, don't ask me why they get named it TD instead of TC. I don't, I don't get it, but it is what it is. I'm going to create four columns, right? And in here, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a for each. I'm going to wrap this in a for each. So we're going to say at for each employee in employees. And in here, we're going to output employee. I'm just going to copy and paste this to each one of these and just really quickly um, set the 
columns that I want. Okay, save this and let's run it. Let's see what we get. It should, it really should. I'm just going to put a breakpoint here. It really should, um, it's probably going to fail because. Actually, let me stop. It's probably, actually, let me run it. I want to grab the URL for the, the server from the Swagger tool here. So uh, let's see. It should tell me what it is when I execute it, what the URL should be. So I'm actually going to copy this URL right here. It's a really easy way to do it, but guys, just look at that. And then in here, I'm going to paste that URL. Of course, if this was a production website, you'd actually put the actual correct path for the URL in here, right? So we're going to, um, nope, let me stop this. We got to, so I'm going to right click the prop, the solution, go to properties. And what we want to do, we want to start up multiple projects. So in this startup project, select multiple startup projects. You're going to want to start the client application and the server application at the same time. And I'm moving the server project to the top because I want that to start first. And now we hit start and we should get the swagger, which is the server, right? And we should also get the blazer application. So if I hit employee list and we got an error. So when you get this bar down here, that means you got an exception. You can hit F12 on your keyboard, pulls up the developer tools. And I really like the developer tools at the bottom. So um, in here, you want to go into the console and look at the error that you received. So it's complaining because um, this Blazor application, the, the, the origin is different than um, the or than the origin of the web API. And so really the only thing that's different here is the port number, but still browsers have security mechanisms to prevent uh, hackers from calling our, our web services if we don't want them to, right? And so um, if we by default, web APIs can only be called by from the same domain, right? So like like, like if I if I was running this web app on the same port, I could execute the web service and no, it would be no problem. But because this is server side and this is client side, it's two separate applications. I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is there's something called cores, right? That basically tells your web service that you can um, it, it lets you basically enable cross uh, site. Uh, uh, requests basically so that way you can you can tell it if it's from this domain it's okay if it's from that domain it's okay or you can allow any let's go into um, the server uh, services here so builder that service so we're gonna say builder dot services dot of course okay so it has it already so you don't have to add a new get package just you can actually just do it this way and what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna copy this from uh, another project that I have here. Oh, that's giving me an error. But uh, I'm going to, for, for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to make it so that we allow any origin. Oh, I'm missing, uh, I'm missing a squiggle here. Yeah, there you go. So this could be whatever you want it to be. It's just to be any, any web. Like cores, if any, doesn't doesn't really matter. Save this. You have to tell it to use it. So that would be in down here. You have to say app dot use cores, and then you have to tell it the policy that you want to use, and that's the policy name that you gave, right? Like that. And you just build it. I believe that's how you do it. So this this. This is really bad practice, by the way, of production. You don't want to do this unless you have a public web service that you're building that you want to expose to everyone. So just saying, point that out. This is just for the demo purpose here. Um, close that and, and it built successfully. So like, let's run it. 
it should allow the client application to call the web service now without any problems. We're gonna go to employee list and see what we get. Boom, so it called it successfully, but for some reason, we have no data, which is interesting. All right, so uh, let's just change the startup settings of the client app so that it so if you go into so that it, it opens up the employees page automatically not the home page so you go you double click on properties over here under the Nuno solutions employees client application it opens up the screen click on debug expand general and they move the, all these settings have been changed so you're going to click click your open debug launch profile ui and then in this url uh, field here you just type in employees and that way when you run the application it just takes you directly to the employees route basically or page you can see here, it went directly to employees. All right, so for some reason, our component is uh, receiving data, but it is not outputting the employee information in here, which is a problem. So let's stop this. Um, first thing I noticed, I just want to get rid of this. And also, if the component is, is null, I'm just going to type in loading. Employee, employees so that way we know what's what it's doing and I'm just gonna put this in a um, space band for now let me just retrieve this data as a, as a, as a string read as string that way when I go into here I can inspect the data that's being returned from the web service it really should be that same JSON output that we get for the Swagger utility. Loading employees. Okay, so let's look here. If I look at this. I mean, the data is in there. The data is absolutely in there. So let's do this. Um, I'm returning the data as a string. And yeah, let's just do it this way. That's interesting. It's like it's not deserializing properly. That's wild. Um, and I'm using the built-in .NET serializer now, so there's something I'm doing wrong here. So let me just let me just do that way. I can stop at this breakpoint. I'll put the breakpoint here. I want to inspect this object because it's like mind blowing that it's not working. It should work. I think I know why actually, now that I think about it. Uh, let me just. Yeah, it's all, it creates two objects, but they're, they, they're not mapping properly. So there's a, there is a, what is it, read from content, read from JSON. what we have to do so I should be able to just do this I was just doing this incorrectly oh great it's a list let's run this yay there we go so now our page is successfully retrieving data from a web API the web API is successfully Connecting to the database, our SQL Express database, fetching data from the employees table, and then returning it from the Web API, or the which is the server side project, 
as JSON to the client application, the Blazor WebAssembly application, in which we are we're basically receiving that JSON data, reading it from the HTTP injected uh, client, and we're constructing basically or deserializing it into a list of employee objects. And then once this employee object is no longer null, you see this disappears and then this piece of data appears and that's why you get a table that looks kind of like this. Awesome.